Hello YouTube. Tonight we're going to be reviewing some caramels. Caramels. Alright, we're at Full Raptor. Get the housekeeping out of the way. And Crocodilo is joining me. Alright. Well, there's only one left in the bag. That should be a telling beginning to the video. These are Lint Lindor Caramels. So it says irresistibly smooth milk chocolate truffles. I don't know the retail price on this thing, but you get about five OZs. And they've also got a variety of other colors in different bags. It's their advertisement. And you see this little swooshy design with the caramel being poured into the chocolate by that guy. Busy fellow. Um, <clears throat> Do you dream in chocolate? Yeah, kind of. A master Swiss chocolatier since 1845. Um, there's two more little logo icons that are more interesting to me. And then the basic design. These two. One is a dragon. And one is a strange shape. So that's pretty cool. Dragon with a crown. Ah, well I like it more now. So it's, um, they're good. Let me just try to give a good fair objective review here's the packaging individually um, barcoded so they must be very proud of this product and each one uh, savory enough to warrant an individual transaction okay So, not so bad on the presentation. Already what's erupting up out of this um, individual package is a, is a pretty milk, is a very milky flavor. And um, the milk and butter top notes of this caramel treat are really strong. It's heavy, heavy on the um, cocoa butter. There's actually additional cocoa butter and sugar added in outside of the milk chocolate, milk and cocoa butter. Uh, and interestingly, we have barley malt powder as the second ingredient after milk chocolate. So all in all, it makes for a, well, a different approach, doesn't it? It's a sphere with a round circle on the top, a small round circle. Well, an indention, I guess. No, no. That Death Star indention is different. It's beside the circle that's carved in. You can see the light playing with it. And on the other side, and then there's of course the equator. And there is an indention. So, <clears throat> if I hadn't eaten all but one, we could do uh, sort of an <laughs> experiment with cracking one open and tasting these individual bits. So I guess I guess we should do that anyway. Uh, overall, okay. So first, what I'm going to do is 
crack it open. Here we have the substrata. This is a it's a real planetary kind of a feeling here. So uh, this is not a fully fully filled. It has been poured into the mold, I guess, and it's got a definite sweeping sort of like a hollow point where the caramel center settled. And I don't think there's anything else in there. It's definitely not gooey. In fact, um, well, yeah, they're about the same sort of like so they're about the same amount of solid and it's melting in my hand. So what I'm going to do is replace the cap and enjoy it the way it's supposed to be eaten. You're first confronted with something that's mildly chocolate flavored. In fact, um, usually when I buy chocolate, I get a dark chocolate. This is very much the opposite of that, and to me, it doesn't even really taste like chocolate because there's such a mild chocolate flavor. It very much is dominated by the, um, I guess, the rich cocoa buttery sweetness. And I don't like malted milk balls. Maybe if I had like a sort of like an artisanal malted milk ball, I would really like it. Because I am picking up sort of the um, <clears throat> more of a stable undertone of a barley, malted barley. Okay, as that outer shell is being um, incised through, and um, I'm getting into the Oh, well, now there's coolness in my mouth. Let's look into this caramel. Oh yeah, on the teeth, it's actually kind of co cool. So that's a nice reason to enjoy one of these slowly. The entire thing melts into a real creamy flavor. Yeah, it's got strict vegetable oil as an ingredient. And it does div dissolve into sort of a creamy oiliness. <clears throat> it's gone now. The caramel that's mentioned is um, caramel paste. With real butter and cream. So. And they round out the ingredients once more with barley malt powder again. So it's it's mentioned twice, uh, which I didn't think was necessary. I mean, because if it's already the second ingredient, then it, then by weight it should be, you know, that amount should be sort of included in the second ingredient. But they mention it again, so it does have a. Um, See, now that it's now that it's out of my mouth, it's it has left behind a little bit of a thickness or sort of a um, <clears throat> uh, just an unruly kind of a trait on the very back of my palate. But I was uh, really pleased with the first experience I had with these. And I've had these truffles before. Uh, sort of like their variety pack is where I guess I would begin because they have dark chocolate ones and white chocolate ones. And um, overall, I think it, they're, um, they're really good. And now that I'm looking here at this, these little caramel drops, uh, it, it, the visual glance at that really sort of awakened the caramelly flavors in my palate. So it does definitely have those. It's been a long time, but when I was much younger I used to get the caramelly little um, nuggets and eat them. Uh, but just that sort of just dropped off, uh, dropped away from sort of like my candy buying habits.
but it's good. The chocolate, the intense chocolate flavor I'm used to from getting dark chocolate bars, usually impregnated with like uh, raspberries or there's one interesting one that I, I got a few times that was blueberry and lavender chocolate in a bar form. So uh, it's, it's kind of uh, 180 for me to have something like this where the, <clears throat> the chocolate's not the main player. But uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a worthwhile change. It's good. And it, it, I guess it does definitely deserve that specially barcoded individual wrapper. Mm, because it's a savory little delight. It's, uh, it's. It, I, I do think that this company is quite serious player in the mass market of chocolate treats. Mm. Yeah. Well, I've been to some specialty shops. I think in New York where. Uh, like their whole gig is chocolate and you walk in and there's just kind of display on display of chocolate treats uh, just and the, the prices are way in the stratosphere so uh, it's 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 funny how it can become a uh, marketed luxury good these little trifling bites uh, but uh, but it's fun to stretch out a bit, but I'm going to get the, uh, well probably the next time I get the chance I'm going to get the sachet of all the different flavors or at least their uh, their combo and I guess look out for a review for that in the future, but overall I'm happy with this. I think that they should probably trumpet this dragon design and logo a little bit more. Oh there he is. All right, well, I didn't notice this until now, but there's another dragon there beside the logo. See, I should give a more careful look at this stuff if I'm going to give a critical review. There he is. Wearing a really nicely developed kind of a crown. A really ornamented sort of like a crown covered in ribbons and other designs and like flower, a spray of flowers coming up out of his crown. So that's awesome. He, he's only got two front legs, so I guess that makes him some other type of mythological beast. Lint and Sprungli. Well, I can say I, um, I do highly recommend them. It was a... Uh, <clears throat> It's a good experience, and it screamed quality, really. So, uh, yep, and that's how I feel about that.